Hi guys, my name's Matt, and in this episode of the Armourer's Bench, we're going to take a look at an interesting Sterling submachine gun clone, craft made in Northern Ireland during the Troubles. From the late 1960s into the 90s, Northern Ireland suffered a long period of sectarian violence, commonly known as the Troubles. Without going into too much detail about the conflict, other sources can do a much better job of that than I can today. The violence saw Irish Republican paramilitary groups, Ulster Loyalist paramilitary groups, and British security forces involved in a protracted low-level conflict, with a Republican insurgency fighting not just British forces, but also Loyalist paramilitaries, including groups like the Ulster Volunteer Force, the Ulster Protestant Volunteers, and the Ulster Defence Association. This Sterling clone is believed to have been assembled by Loyalist paramilitaries, although which group and its origins are unclear. Loyalist groups during the 60s and 70s tended to be less well armed than Republican groups, and relied more heavily on improvised weapons and small arms stolen from military and police armories and personnel. When tensions rose in the late 60s, the Loyalists were largely equipped with obsolete and outdated weapons. Sammy Duddy, a member of the early Loyalist group, the Westland Defence Association, and later a press officer for the Ulster Defence Association, recalled the dire state of their arsenal at the time. We had no guns. The IRA had automatics, high-velocity sniper rifles, powerful pistols, the lot. But we had fuck all. There were virtually no guns on the Loyalist side. The only weapons we had were baseball bats. And I just thought to myself, what the fuck are we going to do when they come in here with their machine guns? Throw bats at them? The Ulster Volunteer Force, or UVF, took to stealing what weapons and spare parts they could from the British military and the Royal Ulster Constabulary. Weapons assembled from captured Sterling Mark IVs and L2A3s, as well as Sterling spare parts kits, became common. In this case, this weapon has a number of cannibalised original Sterling parts, which had been paired with a craft-made receiver tube. From examination, we can see that the weapon's end cap has a Sterling part number, CR110, stamped inside. Similarly, the weapon has a factory-made plastic pistol grip. Other factory-made parts include the helically grooved bolt and the two recoil springs and charging handle. These would have been among the more difficult parts to manufacture. There is also a seemingly factory-made trigger group and some parts from the magazine release. The Sterling has a trigger mechanism cassette which can be set into the pistol grip assembly and a spring steel trigger guard which effectively holds it in place. The magazine housing is well sized and utilises various parts from a Sterling's magazine release, including the button and a set screw as well as the catch piece itself. Note how the trigger assembly is welded and ground smooth where it joins the tube receiver. On factory made guns there is a clear seam. The poorer quality tube steel of the receiver also appears to have drooped or bent a little around the middle of the weapon. The holes in the barrel shroud are of a uniform size but they're roughly drilled and not equally spaced. At the front of the receiver tube we can see that they've aligned the barrel with a pair of large bolts, suggesting that the barrel may have been factory made too. There's no end cap catch at the rear nor provision for a folding stock either. While whoever made the receiver tube went to the trouble of adding hand stops found on the actual Sterling, they're clearly only lightly welded on. Another difference is the absence of a bayonet lug on the left side of the barrel shroud, and a much more crude fixed sight sat within a U-shaped piece of metal welded to the tube receiver to act as a front sight protector. The factory-made Sterling's front sight is adjustable, and the sight protectors are folded forward and aligned across the tube receiver. The rear sight and its protectors appear to have been sheared off at some point. The only marking on the weapon, 29992, is crudely electro-penciled onto the top of the magazine housing, where you'd normally see markings saying Sterling Mark IV or L2A3. When that crude serial number was added isn't clear. The black paint on the receiver is wearing thin, and we can clearly see some rough file marks in places as well. Hundreds of craft-made submachine guns were built to feed from Sterling and Stem magazines, and there are numerous surviving examples of guns made from materials like box tubing. Often parts were clandestinely made in Ireland's factories and shipyards like Holland and Wolfe in Belfast, giving rise to the name Shipyard Special. Other nicknames alluding to their craft-made characteristics included Rattlers and Table Leg Guns. 
The origins and story behind this particular weapon remain unknown. It's today part of a UK Ministry of Defence collection, and is said to have been found in Northern Ireland during the Troubles. Regardless, it's a very interesting piece of clandestine engineering, which shows some considerable skill to its assembly, which is unsurprising as there are numerous accounts of skilled machinists working on illegal firearms parts during the period. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, feel free to leave a comment down below, and please do share the video with friends, it really helps the channel to grow and overcome YouTube's algorithms. If you enjoy our videos, please consider supporting us via Patreon, any help is very much appreciated. Thanks again for watching, catch you next time.